What is going on everybody? Welcome to the ninth Python for Finance tutorial video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about expanding the boundaries or actually going outside of the Quantopian boundaries. So up until this point, we have only covered things that are included and are a part of Quantopian as far as whether we're calculating a moving average or if we are accessing fundamental data or even the prices that we're using are all part of Quantopian. But what if we want to reach outside of Quantopian for some things? So uh, maybe we have a source of signals or maybe we want to use prices outside of Quantopian. What if we want to backtest a Bitcoin trading algorithm? Well, at least at the moment of me filming this, they don't have Bitcoin prices. So you could, but you could import Bitcoin prices. And the way that we do this is with the fetcher that Quantopian uh, has built for us. So with the fetcher, what we can do is as long as our CSV is oriented in kind of the way that the fetcher wants, we are able to access any CSV file that's hosted on, you know, via a URL basically. And we can reference that, pull that in, store that to a pandas data frame and start uh, accessing that data as long as we also have obviously a date column to reference. So uh, that's what we're going to be covering here and for this tutorial we're going to be using the Centex uh, API. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Centex, this is my sentiment analysis website. Uh, we've got finance, politics, and some other stuff, but with finance we do sentiment analysis and for example um, the, the question that you might have is, you know, how good is it? Like, can we actually trade based on the sentiment analysis of a company? And if so, how do we do? So like here would be, you know, Bank of America. This blue line here is the sentiment. Then we've got price. And at least visually, it looks like in some places, yeah, we would probably be beating the market. And in other places, no, nah, maybe not. We're not really sure, right? Especially because there's more lines that we could add or we could have a short term, which is like a bunch of squigglies. And now we're just, I don't know, coloring outside the lines here. So looking at a graph and looking at patterns, humans are really good at seeing patterns and they're really good at being like, yeah, that'll work or, or no, that won't work. But usually we try to fit things like we just really want things to fit. So the question is, while this may look visually fitting, does it work? And so uh, we're going to be using the Centex API for this. Uh, normally it is a paid API, but I have a sample. So we'll be using a sample of the API. And this is actually going to be all signals from the inception of Centex all the way up until just a few days prior to me filming this. So we'll really get a good feel for uh, whether or not you know these signals work, but we'll be back testing based on purely sentiment signals. So you could also back test purely on any other signal. So maybe you've got um, some sort of signal generation that you've got going on. So if you do, feel free to, instead of using the Centex signals, use your own signals, try whatever you want. Uh, but I'll be showing you at least the format that it should be in so you can do this. Uh, and if we go, let's see, to the Centex API, so right here, what we can do is we can come down to, so this is api.centex.com, and this is the, we offer a few different APIs. This is the one for sentiment signals. You can get a sample, so this will be the sample sentiment signal. So let's go ahead and click on that, and that should bring up this for you. So again, we start in 2012, this is October 14th. That's basically, this is when Centex was born, and the only company we tracked was Apple at the time. And then a few days later, I brought in Microsoft and Google. And then a few months later, we started bringing in basically every company in the S&P 500. So uh, this sample goes all the way from, you know, that late 2012 all the way to June 15th, which is just a few days ago. Uh, I'll update the sample from time to time, but because I offer a paid API, uh, I'm not going to keep this live updated. Uh, it, a lot of data and a lot of work and just a lot of everything went into Centex, so I really can't just give it away for free. But at least the sample, for the purposes of this tutorial, I can do, and I think it's cool. So anyway, uh, that's what we'll be doing. Uh, so this is every day, 30 minutes prior to market open. It generates the last day's worth for whatever uh, stock is here. So if a stock wasn't updated within the last 24 hours, it won't show up here uh, for this day, basically. So every stock that was updated within the last 24 hours from 1300 GMT, so this is 30 minutes prior to market open uh, for the New York Stock Exchange, it calculates the, last 20, the mean of the last 24 hours of sentiment. So as we can see on June 15th, 
at 1330 minutes uh, right before market open. Cisco was rated as a negative three. So that's kind of pretty negative. That's as negative as it gets actually for Cisco. So for us, we would want to short Cisco in that sense. So anyways, there's that. This goes from negative three to a positive six. Uh, the positives I'm more interested in playing with, I think shorting is risky. So I just, the shorting just has a negative one, negative two or negative three, whereas positives go from anything that's more expanded basically in the range. But a negative three is just as powerful as a positive six. So keep that in mind. So anyways, uh, we'll be we'll just write something that bait, that trades on the extremes anyways. Uh, we're trying not to get too fancy. But those are the signals that we want to use. And anyway, we've got dates here. So can we trade on this, this information? So let's go ahead and uh, get started. So the first thing that we can do is an initialize. This is where we have to actually pass uh, the... The fetcher. So for example, let's do a first we want to define how much are we willing to invest at any one time. So we're going to say context dot uh, investment underscore size. This is going to be equal to the context dot portfolio dot cash divided by 10.0. So we're going to invest 10% of our portfolio at any one time. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to use a stop loss here. So uh, we're going to say context dot stop underscore loss underscore PCT. So this is stop loss percent is going to be 0 0.995. Okay, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. But basically, uh, we'll just use this number to multiply the original value by and that will be our stop loss number. Then we have to use a new uh, function here that we haven't covered, and that's going to be set symbol lookup date. So this will set the lookup date for specific symbols, and this is because as time has gone on, companies have entered and exited the S&P 500, or actually the New York Stock Exchange, not the S&P 500. Companies have also entered and exited the S&P 500, but the New York Stock Exchange, and so at any one time, maybe one company operates the symbol of, I don't know, CINF, and then a few years it goes out, and then maybe a year or two later, a new company comes in and takes that exact same symbol. So to account for this, uh, we set a symbol lookup date, and this is where we specify a date that these this date is the date of the symbol, whatever symbol we're looking up. So if the company doesn't exist at this time, it's not going to find it, uh, and if if it does have a conflicting name, it's going to use the name that was as of October 1st, 2012. I'm using that time because that's basically when Sendex started. So sent symbol look update, done. Now we need to fetch underscore the CSV. Uh, and then in here we put the CSV that we want to bring in. Uh, that's this CSV here. So that's sentex.com slash API slash finance slash sentiment dash signals slash sample. You can probably type it. I should put a link in the description. I will probably forget initially, but remind me and I'll put one there if I forget. So copy that, come over here, and uh, in quotes, paste. Now with the CSV fetcher, what we can do is we can specify both a pre-funk and an after-funk, but we'll just do a pre-funk for now. And what pre-funk is going to do is this is basically prior to doing anything else with the CSV. So with prefunk, what we could do is we could say, we could just say we want to run preview, for example. So we can come over here and we can define preview. And then the parameter here is the DF for the data frame. And then here we'll just do log.info. And then we will, um, let's do log.info df.head. Okay, something like that. And that'll be good enough. So that'll just give us a preview of whatever we just loaded, okay? Now, uh, the CSV fetcher can be kind of confusing. So let's go here into the help docs before we wrap up this first part here. And uh, we're looking for fetcher. So where are you, fetcher? There it is, fetcher. And here is a good idea to kind of pay attention to. So you, there's basically two major formats you've got like a format for signals, and then you've got a format for anything for a specific company. Now, they call it signals here, and but for signals, I think that's for like global signals. There was really no way that I could figure out to tie signals to stocks other than to use this version here with the symbols. So that's what I ended up doing anyway. So this is the version that we have, and you can see it looks very, very similar, right? We've got the, the date, 
the ticker and the symbol, or the signal rather. And that's basically how this one's structured. So that's why I copied that structure. Uh, but you basically have those two structures to mimic, so just keep that in mind. Now, um, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll leave it here. And in fact, let's try to build this and make sure everything kind of runs, but we should get the preview at least down here when that runs. Now, fetching the CSV, depending on the size of the CSV, uh, that's gonna take like 30 seconds-ish uh, to pull it in. Like ours is 12 megabytes, 12, 13 megabytes right now. Up, oh, something went wrong here. Runtime on line 12. So we've got, let's see, set symbol initialize. We don't really need this handle data here. Let's go ahead and put in a pass on this. Prefunk is preview. Oh, well, we, well here's what we need to do. Let's, let's return DF here. Uh, that's most likely our problem. Let's run that one more time and see if that solved it. So we're passing basically the prefunk. We pass through our data frame to the preview and the preview should be, yes, there we go. The preview should be returning, I'll just cancel this for now, uh, should return the, the, the head to our log here, but we just canceled it for now. But, uh, and then return the data frame so we can actually continue using it, but we weren't returning the data frame. <laughs> so that's why we got an error. Anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and stop it here and in the next tutorial, we'll talk about actually building our logic and all of that. So stay tuned for that. If you have questions or comments up to this point, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.